to do it. The is, easiest <laughs> way, right? Uh, I love these people who are like, "Well, we don't know when the we don't know when the election is." Well, you know, at some point you've got to be informed somewhat to know when the date of the election is. So and we're telling you it's next Tuesday. <laughs> you have you have a week and a day. <laughs> we're not hiding it from you. Um, okay, so uh, some of the things, uh, a lot of tax increases going on the ballot. As, as usual in, in the St. Louis region, a lot of people are putting some, some tax increases on the ballot, and that's fine. That's what the Hancock, Hancock Amendment requires. But there are, there are definitely some very large tax increases out there, and in particular, the Webster Grove School District tax increase, where there's two different propositions. And if both passed, they would increase the property tax rate by just under a dollar per hundred Per hundred, and for an av- for what does this mean? It means for a two hundred thousand dollar home, if they both pass, your taxes go up three hundred and fifty dollars a year, and that is a sizable, sizable tax increase. That's a chunk of change right there. It is a, a chunk. Of, there's plenty. There's, most homes in the Webster Grove School District are probably worth about that much. Right. And there's plenty that are worth a lot more than two hundred thousand. I mean, these are. This is not some sort of. Well, we'll just raise it a little bit to adjust some things. No, this is going for the the full boat. So three fifty. That you're looking at. What, 35, 32, 33 bucks? What, 30 bucks a month or so? Exactly. Yeah. Right about 30 bucks a month for a $200,000 home. Um, Yeah, 30 bucks an extra month. All right, so one's the school and one's the fire? Is that right? No, no, no. In Webster Groves, they're two different school bond issues. Okay. School, they're school. I'm sorry, they're not bond issues. They're tax rate increases. Right. For a variety of needs, and and I think some of these needs are very legitimate, and some of these needs are, are. Taxpayers are questioning, such as a major investment in the the football stadium. Now Webster Groves got a great football. <laughs> Webster Groves has a great football team right. and a great high school football tradition. But if you really need all this money for 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 investing in teacher raises and and other educational things, some people are questioning the timing on asking for a tax increase that will also include improvements to the football stadium and full day free full day kindergarten, which you know, is sort of the new trendy thing that every school district has to now offer, free right. full-day kindergarten, well, which a lot of people don't necessarily want or need. It's also, it also, uh, we're going to wake up next Wednesday where the voters of Webster Groves pass the bond issue or the sales tax for the new stadium, but not for the new schooling and all that type of stuff. Well, you're right. Those, those, mean, things, can, those things can happen. <laughs> uh, Which is kind of embarrassing where you vote for the to redo the football stadium, but not for the classroom stuff. Right. There are different. The two tax increase proposals uh, have different targets. So I, I hope that the people of Webster Grove, Shrewsbury, Rock Hill, Webster Grove School District really look into it. It is, though... No doubt about it. it is a, it's one of the largest tax increases, if you combine them together, that I've seen in the last seven, eight years following local government pretty closely. That is pretty interesting. Uh, probably because they haven't, they haven't been able to go to the voters here the last couple of years because of the downturn in the economy and so many other things. Or have they gone? They have. I mean, that's, the Post-Dispatch has some good stories on it, and I, they have gone to the voters several times. Now, they haven't gone in the last year or two, right. but they passed a, a tax. Webster Groves, if these both pass would have the highest tax rate for a school district in the region. Hmm. And they did just get a tax increase, I want to say, about three or four years ago. Interesting. All right. What's going on in this Kirkwood Fire Department? Now, if you're going to talk Webster Groves, you got to talk Kirkwood, too. Keep, yes. Keep things even. So they're going to pass, they're looking to pass a sales tax for the, for the fire department to fund their fire and EMS via a new sales tax, which, as they say, you know, most cities with their own fire departments have this sales tax, and Kirkwood is one of the few that doesn't. I don't think that automatically leads to an idea that, well, then we have to <laughs> we have to have it. They've been funding their fire department just fine for a long time. They're saying their needs are, are increased now, and they need this new sales tax. The real problem is that, you know, over the last couple decades, fires are decreasing yes. around, around America and in St. Louis County, yet our expenditures on fire departments keep increasing. So something's something's out of whack here and the the main the main reason is you know nobody nobody allows themselves to have just a paramedic anymore. You know the paramedic that responds to the minor auto accidents right. and and quick calls. Now, you know everybody has to be cross trained as both a fireman and a paramedic. That's great except that firemen make a lot more than paramedics and all of a sudden 30 years ago you had firemen and paramedics and now you have nothing but firemen. So you have firemen responding to to minor auto accidents which generally speaking isn't necessary and that's why you still have this great cost increases for fire services around the region, even though major fires themselves are decreasing 
Trem- substantially. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't mean to open up a, a can of worms here, but I'm going to. Does Kirkwood and these towns need their own fire department? Or can it just be like one big giant fire department in which St. Louis County is under the St. Juana umbrella? Well, it, it could be that. I mean, that would require major legislative changes, right, but it, right. it could happen like that here. It just for seems example, like it's more expensive to, for each town to have their own fire department, I would think. Probably. Yeah, like, yeah probably, except that, you know, you want a firehouse within a certain distance of right. of each of where people live, right. so it's not as if you went countywide, you just have one fire dispatch. Right, right, right. It took right. you 45 minutes to get to Wildwood. Sure. <laughs> There's traffic. Oh, my, oh my uh, goodness. Especially with that stoplight over there that, that drove you late. To, no, no, no. I understand that. You, I, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying consolidate into one house, but, um, you know, there has to be some uh, economies of scale in that how many times, you know, how many bookkeepers do they have and how many chiefs do they need and how many, you know, it just seems like, they could save money if they combined all the all the fire departments and all, all the police departments, but the, we're talking fire here, to where it'd be a St. Louis County fire department, in which would then cover everybody. They they probably could. They almost certainly could. Right. It's now depending on how effectively you did such a consolidation would depend right. whether you were able to save substantial money or whether you were save able to save. A very little bit. Now, you have a similar thing like that out in St. Charles, where let's take the ambulance district and right. leave aside w- this the point of having separate fire departments and ambulance districts, but let's go with it. In St. Charles County, they have one countywide ambulance district that sort of serves the needs of the whole county for ambulance services, right. except for, I believe, the city of St. Charles. They had ambulance service that predated that, but the rest of the county is served by one ambulance district, and I think it, it works pretty well, although they, they, too, have routinely been going to the voters for tax increases. Well, they were actually the shut down for a while, weren't they? Well, I don't think they were weren't shut they? down. They had, the, the, their they first tax some... increase didn't pass, so they had to close some, oh, some stations. Okay. And I think they went back to the voters last year and got a tax increase. And now those reserved. stations have since reopened. If, gotcha. So these are just, people would probably be surprised to know, we, I, I believe, and these were loose calculations I did a while back, that... We spend every bit as much, if not more, on fire services in St. Louis County as we do on police services, despite the fact that police services are used 24 hours a day, seven days, seven days a week, and fire departments just have to be available for that amount of time. I would love to see how many fires are in a given time today as opposed to, say, 20 years ago. Well, that'd, be you, an interesting, that'd be an interesting thing to see how many fewer fires today than than there were 20 years ago well deaths by fire i know I, deaths by fire over the last half century have declined amazingly right i mean and that's a result of a number of things well, Sprink, sprinklers building, building codes, codes right better more professional fire departments right there's, there's right. a lot of reasons for that fire alarms and everything else absolutely fire yeah. alarms are fire alarms are probably the single largest reason right I mean, um, you people are notified about that tiny fire quickly and can deal with it as opposed to being sound asleep when this tiny fire becomes a right an inferno. Yeah, not to mention, you know, um, we mentioned fire codes, but also you know uh, non flammable things and that and everything else. I mean, it's just sort of a people have thought about fires more than they did say fifty years ago. Um, interesting stuff. All right, next week you want to talk uh, University City. University City has a series of of tax increase proposals on the ballot, and I know there's some other good stuff around as well. But the University City one is is very there's side, both sides are active on this. There's a very active no campaign to these issues in U City, and we can talk about the, the difficulty of passing a street bond issue in a place like U City where so many of the streets are private. So you're asking taxpayers, like me in this instance, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, pay, to pay higher taxes for streets that cannot be spent on the private streets in, in your subdivision. And that, there's a lot of streets in your city like that. So if it, so, the private street is paid for by the people on that street? Right. Okay. And in the, the Central West End, your city, Clayton, Ledoux, you have a, a lot of streets like that. So the tax increase in your city for the streets only goes for the public streets, not the private streets. Right. Hmm. So it's just an interesting dilemma for people requesting a, a tax right. increase and for voters nobody wants to be so selfish that that you say it's it's not for me i'm not i'm not voting for it but it it does raise yes. legitimate qu- qu- these aren't pennies we're talking about here well right and somebody's living on a private street why do i want to pay for the public street except you need the public street to get to your private street 
You do, except most of the arterial roads in University City are maintained by St. Louis <laughs> County. So you're already paying for those in your county taxes. So, Wow, that's why you're the it does, developer. It does get a little complicated at the time. That's why you're the director of d development, because I <laughs> can't figure any of this stuff out. So I just want to encourage voters to get informed and pay attention to these issues and cast a, a smart ballot a, a week from now. Ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, Show Me Institute Director of Development, David C. Stokes. When can we read you? When can we see you? Thanks, McGraw. we got a lot of information up on local government and s certain tax increases at our blog, showmedaily.org. Showmeinstitute.org is the website, and people can follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. The next time you're, you're, you're stuck in traffic, I have a suggestion for you. What you should do is you should rent an R&R &R sanitation porta potty and leave it in your car. So the next time you, you get stuck in traffic, you can just use it in your car. That, sound, that sounds like a great idea. I think the porta potty would be bigger than my car. <laughs> they they need a mobile version of the of the porta potty. That's what they need. That is, if if anybody will do it, R and R Sanitation will do it. Look, um, you got uh, fish fries. You've seen them out and about. R and R Sanitation. They've just got uh, finished with their busy season, Mardi Gras and uh, St. Patrick's Day. Now they're getting into opening day and and festivals and street festivals in the summertime, and so. R&R Sanitation is busy all year long. They're the only union toilet company on the Missouri side of the river. They're bigger. means they're cleaner longer. Now, I mean they're bigger. Their reservoir is bigger, which means they can hold more and more of the blue liquid, so it, it smells nicer longer. And it's bigger, roomier. So it's actually bigger than David Stokes' car. That's big. 314-776-4000 or rnrportabletoilets.com.